Uh, Cameron, good to have you with us this morning. Cameron, I think the question many people are asking, it's been 15 days of protest from Insulate Britain. How long are you going to keep doing this for? Yeah, I sincerely hope that we don't have to carry on doing this for any length of time. Sir Patrick Valance, who is the Chief Government Scientific Advisor, he said that it's crucial that the measures we know will help are enacted as quickly as possible. And so it's quite clear when these measures are enacted, we'll stop our campaign of non-violent civil resistance. Uh, apparently, uh, Patrick Valance was talking about planes, not insulation, and you are protesting and calling on the government to, to change our policy in insulating homes. So why quote him? Because it's part of a broader picture, isn't it? I mean, Cameron, this I'm so, is all... sorry, you're, you're campaigning to insulate Britain and you're pushing the government to do something now on that. That's not happening. If anything, you're having the government pushing back, trying to imprison you guys every time you protest. You're not getting very far. How long are you going to keep doing this for? Well, I've just told you we're going to do this until that we save the future of humanity, which Sir David King, the uh, previous government scientific advisor, said we have three to four years right now to do that. Do you understand? As by 2025, we have to radically change the direction we're in. So that's what this looks like, trying to bring about radical change. Cameron, I, I would like to hear from your cause, rather than hearing from quotes, and misquoting, by the way, other people who were, who were quoting on other aspects of the environment that need changing. In terms of insulating Britain, uh, Boris Johnson is not doing anything. Nothing is changing there. So are you going to continue disrupting people's lives? I mean, the other... On Monday, uh, when you disrupted a road in London, you had a man trying to take his father for cancer treatment. He was so angry, so furious, that he said the kind of words that nobody should say to anybody, but such was the level of his fury, that he said he hoped that something like that would happen to the protesters that were there, that they had to deal with a loved one fighting cancer and see how they dealt, see how they felt if something like this happened to them. Cameron, how do you feel about that? I feel terrible. Then why keep doing this? Because this is the only way. I mean, no one else is presenting a better way. The government is betraying us. We're about to see them go into COP and they're going to betray us. And so we need massive amounts of change right now. If anyone has a better idea, I'd be interested to hear from Ash if she has a better idea on what we can be doing. I'm, you know, genuinely, we need to all be coming together and trying to do, you know, across all sides of the demographic, left and right, to get the government to radically change the path that they're taking us on. Because it's taking us to a 2.7 degree world right now. And that is hell. Hell on earth. Cameron, are you, are you going to disrupt COP26 starting on Sunday, Glasgow? We're carrying on with our campaign of non-violent civil resistance. Will that include going to Glasgow? I'm not here to talk about Glasgow. I'm here to talk about what are two Celsius Britain, I'm asking you a question in regards to... Cameron, can, can I ask you a question, please? Do you know how many homes in this country are insulated and what is the target for the number of homes in this country you want insulated within the next four crucial years? Well, we've said it's all social housing and housing association That's houses possible, by 2025. Why, why, that, why, that, why, why, is it, why is it impossible? It's utterly impossible. Why? Mike, because Mike. It's one of the, it would be one of the biggest engineering and building projects ever undertaken in yes, this country. Yes, and why, and can't why, can't, can't, why can't we do that? Can't right? do I'm years. sorry, I'm sorry. This country is lagging behind other countries no, in not. terms of investment in insulation and in renewables. Let me just tell you something, right? China's yeah. the world's biggest polluter. Yeah. It also has more domestic solar capacity mm. than the US Fine. and Europe combined. We are lagging behind. Well, now, uh, I, uh, might, uh, I might have some issues with, with insulate Britain's tactics. However, this is a just cause. If you insulate every social Ash, household but, but home by the end of the decade, of you're issues. saving we poor households money. I'm sorry, Ash, we insulate creating jobs. an awful lot of homes in this country. The no, figures... 38%, that's the minority. No, no, no. Department for Business, Energy and Industrial, 14.3 million properties, Cameron, have cavity wall insulation, 16.6 million... You have lost loft insulation. Now, that to me is a pretty good effort, and, and it's more than any other country in Europe. So, you know, aren't you going to give some credit to the fact that we already have pretty good insulation policies in this country? Credit doesn't mean no, anything. Let, let Cameron, let Cameron respond. Them. Sorry, Ash, let Cameron respond. Uh, Cameron, uh, what, do you say, what do you say about that when it comes to insulating Britain? We're doing far better than some of our European counterparts. Yeah. I think we need to stop blowing our own trumpet. We're all doing pretty badly here. We are producing a large number of new homes every year. 
somewhere in the region of 240, 250,000 homes that are not, I think only one to 2% of those are A rated energy uh, in energy rating. And so we need a 21st century homes. We can't be producing new homes that are getting built that are going to need retrofitting to prepare ourselves for this climate crisis. Okay. It's not good enough. Uh, I don't think people are aware of the enormity of the situation that's coming. And therefore, the response that we need is not insulating a few houses. You know, the government's Green Homes Grant would equate to one in 560 homes getting retrofitted to the standard they need. So at that rate, it would take 560 years to insulate the housing stock here and retrofit you're, you're it properly. You're hearing from somebody when who's we, starting... This is where sorry, we start. We start with individuals. We start we, with people... When we're, in the second, when we're in the Second World War, we didn't build just a few Lancaster bombers and hope that was going to be enough, did we? We came together, we had jewellers getting out there, learning how to make these planes. It was an absolutely nationwide effort. People need to understand the scale of what we need to be doing right now to avert an absolute disaster. How does the government go about insulating all homes in the time frame you've given us at 2030? What should the government be doing here, Cameron? Well, for starters, I think people who are working in the city of London and other financial institutes and busy getting their money from fossil fuels, they should maybe start insulating some homes and do some meaningful work. Cameron, do you feel like you're, you're losing the support of people no, I would say our support, our support is growing. It's expanding like concrete, perhaps. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not worried about losing support. Are you sure about that? What about the drivers, the, the many drivers, the many lives that, you, that you've disrupted in all of this? Sure. It's, it's unfortunate that we have to be in this situation. And if we're not gaining support, then it's only because the media have been lying to the general public for the last 30, I'm sorry, 40 Cameron, what, years. What lies have we been, as have the media been, been telling people? About the climate crisis. They've not been reporting on it really? properly. If they had been, then more people would be up in arms and willing to risk arrest because they realise the truth of how little time we have left. When it comes to, to every a, natural uh, disaster, if there's every the natural disaster that Tesco, we would cover... Okay? Cameron, I'm not going to stand Cameron, by. I'm not going to stand by and let the government decide Cameron, who Cameron, dies don't raise your voice. and who lives. Cameron, don't I'm raise your voice. Cameron, don't raise your voice. Up. Sure, no one's, no one's disputing together. that, but don't raise your voice, we Cameron. We're having a decent conversation here. Don't raise your voice at me. What I was trying to say is that as the media, any time there is a natural disaster, if there seems to be any links to climate change, this is something we will report. When there are reports um, that are released showing the work that's not being done in terms of climate change, we also report on that, Cameron. May, may I just no, like, been, may, make a suggestion? climate in terms deniers of for ages. Uh, disrupting roads, disrupting people's lives. Why not go into people's homes and stick up the insulation in their homes instead? Yes, yeah, so I am retrofitting a 1930s house, bringing it into a 21st century life that was needed. I both run a business and am an activist. I'm doing both. I'm trying to hold two different things in, trying to have integrity with my work and the way that I work with timber and not concrete, as we've seen. And I'm also trying to bring about the radical change that's needed that will only come about from non-violent civil resistance. And I ask people, if COP fails us, we need to come together and say, not on my watch. Uh, well, Cameron, you're not going to get much insulation done if you're jailed, and this is exactly what can happen. Every time you protest from now on, you could face a time in jail. Uh, but, Mike, are you, are you convinced by what some of the things that Cameron's been saying? Uh, well, look, Cameron's got a point of view, and I respect it. But, Cameron, can I ask you one thing, an observation about your group? When we see these people protesting on the roads, they are, generally speaking, middle-aged or old... And I don't see people of your generation amongst those protesters. Normally speaking, as in Greta Thunberg, these protests, particularly about world climate and change, are led by young people worried about their future. But it very much to me, the profile of your protesters are actually middle-aged or old people who don't have as big a future in front of them as the young. Why aren't the young getting involved in your movement and supporting it as much as the middle-aged people? Well, I guess green... a lot of young people don't want to go to prison for two years. There's not many people like myself who are willing to do that because they've seen the severity of the situation and, and, and risk that, that eventuality. Uh, Cameron Ford uh, from Internet Britain, uh, really good talking to you on, on Jeremy Vine this morning. Thank you.